think that's the second meeting of the year. And I'd like to call up uh, Pastor Smokey Gibson from the First Baptist Church of Alexa. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we bow before you today, thanking you for the reminder of how the seasons change, that you are in control of all things. Father, for every fall we know brings a winter, and every winter a spring. And Lord, with every movement, Lord, we are reminded that you are in control. And so today, Lord, as this uh, body meets today, I pray, God, that your blessing and favor would fall upon them. Father, they would recognize the opportunity that we've been given in these days to help people, uh, to lead uh, this city and this county, and to be your instruments of grace and hope to so many who are hurting. Father, we pray for the many who are battling COVID uh, and the diseases that follow, not just there, but all over, and the plights that seem to plague so many people, whether it be need of financial help or uh, medical help or uh, friendship uh, and hope. <clears throat> Lord, I pray today that the work that's done in this room advances the agenda of hope for our great area and that you would continue to hold us close to you. Please forgive us if we fail you. Lord, we know that we're not perfect, but we pray that in your grace, we would find that it's sufficient for every single day of our life. Lord, we love you, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll ask my president of power to do I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> First up, item one, recognize Johnny Oslin, LPK Architects, as he gives us an update on the Harrison County Multi Department Complex. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Uh, over the last several weeks since we were last here in front of you, we uh, have been working from the schematic design stage to the design development stage. We're at approximately 75% design development. Uh, we met with Jackie uh, last week and her civil engineering team. Uh, we're coordinating with her staff engineer for the overall site design, uh, including site grading, utility, stormwater control. Uh, we'll continue to coordinate with Jackie and the, and the road department over the next several weeks to determine what scope items can be performed in-house. I know that we were we talked about uh, how much of that initial site work can be done using county services um, to try to save some money. You know, they're, they're still, that's not free. There's still a cost associated with that, but I'll leave that up to you guys to determine what bucket that needs to come out of. But um, we do believe that, we, we know uh, that the site is going to be raised approximately four to five feet around the building itself, and then we'll grade off uh, and, and prep for uh, future phases in the back like we talked about. Describe where this is going for the press. Thank you. Sure. Call over the weekend. Thank yeah, you. yeah, that's no problem. Uh, so we're on uh, the Seaway and uh, if you recall this is property that was is controlled uh, by the Harrison County Development Commission um, through a, a uh, agreement. Uh, that property is now going to be part of Harrison County. Uh, as such, um, the code will meet the building codes as required by the city of Gulfport, but because it's a county property, uh, the flood elevation is a foot higher than what is required for the city. So the county requires a foot more freeboard uh, so that you're uh, more protected, we should say. So uh, this is a certain uh, great use of taxpayer funds for uh, the protection of that property. Um, Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Did I hear you say that the code would fall under Gulf Ward as opposed to... The building said, code itself would be Gulf Ward because it's within the city of Gulf Ward, but you have the opportunity as a county entity and because it's a county property, you know, you will own it, um, that we will go to that next standard of the elevation requirements. Well, I don't have a problem with that except sure. that we've never done it to my knowledge if it was county property, county code took care of it. Have y'all seen that way it's always been? It's something we can discuss. Um, 
it's it's not really going to affect the building it's going to affect the site and so because the county you know is doing the civil engineering in-house again saving money uh, in that respect, uh, we can work through those details, but we'll coordinate with, okay. with the city and the and county. And we're using the county flood maps, so it doesn't make sense right. to use part of it, not the other part, sure. to me. Understood, okay. understood. We'll verify that and we'll give you an update. Uh, so we are also working on the updated uh, cost estimate and specifications index. That's just a requirement for that 75% uh, review. We're asking Jackie and her team, uh, along with any of the board, who would like to review the uh, current design to review it, give us any feedback as we proceed into the uh, construction document space. Over the next week or so, uh, we'll meet with Jackie and again, any inter interested parties uh, to discuss the interior and exterior finishes. Uh, we're in that phase now. Uh, and we are asking again, just like before, I came to the board asking for permission to proceed to the next phase of design. So that's part of why I'm here today is uh, permission to proceed to the construction documents phase with the understanding we would incorporate any review comments. Uh, and then what we would be doing is asking for, and I'm just giving you a kind of a, a month out uh, look ahead, is that we're going to, at the February 7th or 14th meeting, uh, ask for permission to advertise so that we'll be ready. You know, you give us that permission, we get the bid documents, we'll finish shortly thereafter. Uh, we'll have those bid documents out on the street uh, in February, late February, mid, fe mid to late February, and then with uh, bids coming back in March. So, uh, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I could make a motion to allow them to proceed to the next stage. Okay. okay it's been motion and proper seconds in and further discussion to allow them to continue to the next phase. All in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll oppose motion carried. Great. And if, if anybody would uh, want to have a copy of the bid, uh, the, the progress documents, we can email those out to the board just at your request. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. First up, I didn't choose order consider support, supporting the effort to improve the National Flood Insurance Program and resolve issues related to the implementation of risk rating 2.0. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Motion. Second. And discussion on it. So this was the question that you asked Frank last week about the flood insurance, mm -hmm. and his recommendation was that we join GNO, which we did get this letter. This thing is ugly, <clears throat> and it's going to get uglier as time goes on. So we'd need to join forces with other states and other counties and other cities to make sure that our voices get heard, because it's going to impact everybody that is anywhere close to water not just on the coast, if you're on Pearl River, it's, it's gonna get bad. So we're just asking y'all to support this so we kind of throw in together and go with Florida and Alabama and Louisiana to try to get somebody to listen upstream, no pun intended. Yeah, we have a five state coalition uh, caucus that through the National Association of Counties and we are well aware and keep track of this and uh, National Association of Counties is also helping us with they have lobbyists and it includes uh, five states of the coastal counties and parishes so um, any information that you may get or if you'd like some more information we've been working on this for uh, I guess 10 years probably is how long they've been kicking it down the, the, down the road the can down the road so um, it's if you it, we're going to be discussing it probably in February again. Yeah, anything we get, we can share and vice versa, which is we're all in this together and it's going to get, it's, it's already bad and it's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. So, But if you have an opportunity, you might want to attend that five state caucus meeting that will be in D.C. Okay. in February. Okay. I'll give you the information. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. <clears throat> Enjoy the discussion. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Before we go to the facility agenda, I have one agenda I'd like to add to the agenda. <clears throat> the order acknowledge the receipt of the grant award increase for RSDP grant, which has a remaining balance of $19,257.87 to be used for the building repairs and office furniture of Maples Drive location <clears throat> and authorizing budget amendment in the amount of $15,257.87 to 061 
4-5-3-6-4-1, building repairs, and $4,000 to 0 6 one 4 5 3 9 one 9 Furniture. We get a motion. Motion. Second. Okay. Discussion. Any further discussion on it? All in favor of the motion, say aye. Okay. All opposed, the motion carries. Next, we have a consent agenda, <coughs> items number three through eight. Has been placed on the consent agenda, same with unity routine, non controversial matters, and which all supervisors are likely to agree. Motion? Motion. Second. Discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. <coughs> item nine, I order on the tax assessors, order acknowledge the receipt of and approving petitions with decreases to the 2021 real and personal property rolls as recommended by the tax assessor. Motion. Second. Discussion. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed. The motion carries. Item 10, order acknowledge the receipt of and approving petitions for increases to the 2021 real property roll as recommended by the tax assessor. Motion. Second. Discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item 11, order spread in 20 minutes. Personnel changes for the tax collector's office as listed and on file with the payroll administrator and the human resources department. Motion. Motion. Second. Discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item 12. Order improve, approving mileage reimbursement for Justice Court employees as listed here from 001 166 475. Motion. Second. Discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item 13, order approving payment of claims listed as recommended by Jacqueline Turner, PE, Harrison County Engineer. Motion. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carries. <sighs> Next we have zoning. I think we have two appeals, but uh later in. Okay. we're gonna get those later. Right. <clears throat> Next up on the first minute, all the proven payment of claims as listed to be paid from the tort account. Motion. Second. Discussion. <clears throat> all in favor of that motion say aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carried, item 17, order concurring with the intervention court of employment as listed and on file with the payroll clerk and personnel department. Motion. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Item 18, order concurring with the county administrator on employment as listed and on, and on file with payroll clerk and personnel department. Motion. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carries. 19 orders spread upon the minutes. The list of local state contract and emergency orders issued by the purchase department for the month of December 2021. Motion. <laughs> Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item 20, consider accepting low bid purchase of a 2018 Ford Transit passenger van for youth court in the amount of $44,000 for CASA payable from line item 030193915. Motion. 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 Discussion. Discussion. Now we do have the two bids, right? This is Mr. Hollis. Sorry, can you say that again? Mr. Hollis. Right? <laughs> These are two, the Mack, Hike, Ford, and Book Johnson are two acceptable bids, right? Yes, ma'am. Which, but Jocelyn did not bid on it. Oh, no, no you did it correctly. So then we still don't have it one bid? <coughs> you have Casas bid and you have Mac. Um, Casas, what they're selling it for. Is that a legit? Yeah, Casas selling it. Casas selling it. That was the selling price. And then Ford, whatever, Mac Ford is the other one. But is Casa who's selling it considered an actual bid? Is my quote. question. It's a quote, quote. yeah. They are proper, Mr. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, I just want to say one thing. Um, 
it's no big deal now, but since council paid for this with BOCA money, it, that money's got to be returned. I just don't want the count. I just don't want grant money, right, to go to this, and then they find out later that it was paid for with BOCA money. So I just wanted to make sure that you follow through with that. With them. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor of that motion say aye. aye. All opposed? That motion carries. Next, we have the sheriff. We recognize the sheriff on his to uh, report on the number of persons currently mm housed -hmm. in Harrison County Jail Facility as discussed on the map. Uh, currently, we have 747, 49 misdemeanors, 127 females, <clears throat> 80 that have cleared state arrest, and 31 federal inmates. The only thing I I gave I gave you early, and I'll go over this with y'all. It's uh, um, y'all notice notice that I'm putting on the board every month the off-duty employment roster. That is by statute, so we have to do that. Um, what this is is it's an off-duty management company. Biloxi Police Department went with it, and it's working very well. So it's a uh, they they really take the burden off of everybody's back with insurance and everything else. It's, uh, General liability is a $2 million uh, policy. Each occurrence is $3 million. Workman's compensation is fully covered. Uh, liability is a $1 million per occurrence, and auto liability is $1 million per occurrence. So following under, following under them, uh, our attorneys have went over this, you know, the whole contract, and, and they've changed a lot of things in it. Um, but I'd like to get this on, on the agenda that they'd be accepted to where we can start using them. How come that the front to make? It's where their second job is. That workers' comp doesn't cover. That's what you're trying to get away from. That's this, this company's going to cover. But I, no, not necessarily. I mean, like if they're going to work, if they're not a full-time employer. They're not. They're not they're listed not as part-time. No, I like Coliseum's not going to cover this, so it's not going to not going to cover. So it's got to be covered by somebody. So this company's willing to to take the coverage on everybody. And what's the cost? <laughs> Nothing. There's no cost. Motion. Second. Any further discussion? Contract. Has Tim seen it under discussion? He hasn't seen it. No, my attorneys went. Yeah. My attorneys saw it. And, you know, Tim, I don't know why Tim would have to see it, but he, he didn't. I don't. I don't think they sent it to him, I and I don't see why they would. Have. We're not. We're not uh, uh, accepting any liability or cost to anything with this. Okay. Any further discussion? I made it. I don't know. Second. I'll second. Still up on discussion. Is there any further? Not all in favor of the motion? Say aye. All opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thanks, Chair. Item 22 order authorizing the board president to execute the quarterly reporting for Senate Bill 2002. Sheriff funding for the Harrison County Law Enforcement Training Academy for the quarter ending December 31st, 2021. Motion. Sure. <clears throat> All right, discussion. All in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item 23, order authorizing the board president to execute the quarterly reporting for the Senate Bill 3065. Sheriff funding for the Harrison County Law Enforcement Training Academy for the quarter ending December 31st, 2021. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. Mm -hmm. All opposed. Motion carries. Item 24. For the accepting fiscal year 2021 grant award for the state of Mississippi Department of Public Safety, Office of Homeland Security, in the amount of $100,000 for Operation Stone Garden, grant number S21LE. 024, authorizing the board president to execute all necessary documents and directing the county administrators to complete the budget assignment for said funds. Motion. Motion. Discussion? Second. All in favor say aye. All opposed? Motion carry item 25, order authorizing the <coughs> disposal of assets per attached list and authorizing the inventory clerk to remove same from the inventory. Motion. Second. Discussion? All in favor that say aye. Uh -huh. All opposed. Motion carries. Item 26 order acknowledging the receipt of approving and spreading upon the minutes the memorandum the Mississippi Department of Finance 
and administration regarding the updated mileage reimbursement rate, effective January 1st, 2022. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. All opposed? Motion carried. All right, 27 order acknowledge the receipt of the U.S. dollar Libra, se Libra settlement. Libra settlement. Libra. Libra. <laughs> Correct. Libra. Uh, settlement in connection with derivative hedge debt in the amount of $361 for deposit into the general account, accounting, the general accounting BNI sinking fund. Two ten zero 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 three forty. Second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. All aye. opposed. Motion carries. Chancellor Clerk, order approving employment of John McAdams, Chancellor Clerk for the calendar year 2022 to collect and assemble data and information to perform the services required by the Board of Supervisors for Parent Homestead Exemptions for Mississippi Code 1972, annotated 20, 273337, and to perform certain duties and fixing compensation as provided in said statute. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Discussion. <coughs> All in favor of the motion say aye. All opposed. Motion carries item 29, order authorizing the advertising for request for proposal from qualified county depositories for the privilege of keeping Harrison County funds or any part thereof for calendar year 2022 and 2023 for Mississippi Code 1972 annotated. 50 years ago, and it's a formula based on the number of employees, capital and assets in the county, within the county, and uh, 
if you if you have a home bank here, not a home bank, but if you have a bank here established in Harrison County, and it's a, it's a formula, uh, the largest percentage goes to Hancock Bank. <laughs> and I know we've had I know we've had these discussions before, but would, wouldn't it make more sense to buy the policy of competitive? Bidding, for yes. example, well, to yes. bid well, what they would pay us. That special. happened with the city of Duckport, and uh, they had to, the bank could not do it. You can't have a. Uh, they pledged a certain amount of money of interest, and the bank had to withdraw that agreement because they couldn't do it because of the the interest rates had dropped so low. So I don't know how you could could uh, for four years have a bank guarantee a certain amount of interest? They would, I don't know. No, they they would, would base it just like people's bank is basing right. it. Right. Yeah, why not? Yeah, it would at, be a floor. At one time, we did tie it in to the interest of the T-bill. We still do. You still do? You, what yes. are we getting? A quarter above it, or what it's is the rate above the TV? 0.25, or is it 2.250 now? I don't even think it's that. It's yeah. 0.15. But as I mentioned earlier, we're you know we're kind of in a rock and a hard place, but because we're required to invest it, but we're not really getting any income. Um, another option might be to look at certain funds. And maybe stretched out for a 90 day CD versus the 20th day, but I really don't think the investment income would be uh, that much more. And we don't do any investments beyond 90 days. Yeah. You're good because I anticipate maybe this spring or summer we're going to see interest rates begin to rise. Well, county, counties that are limited, true. they're not, not like uh, cities can have a little bit more flexibility, but counties statutorily are not allowed to have long-term investments. Thank you. Thank you. All right, is there any further discussion on the item 29? I'm sorry. I made the motion, but we didn't get a second. Okay. second. Okay. It's been motion and second and further discussion. All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All opposed, that motion carries. I would like to further. Yes. Order approving payment of $4,825 to Ruby Beam Utilities, LLC. Invoice dated 12 30 2021. Tap fees for Harrison County Law Enforcement Training Academy. Payable 001 200 510. Okay. Discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All opposed, motion carried item 31. <coughs> All approved claims, payment of claims listed. Motion. Second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. All opposed, that motion carried item 32. Order correcting screeners, screeners error in order of adopt, in, in the order adopted February the 6th. 2018, <clears throat> being agenda item number nine, file ID number 182406, corrected said order to read as follows. Order acknowledging receipt of the adopted MEMA District 9 Regional Housing Hazard Mitigation Plan as recommended by Rupert Lacey as on file with the clerk of the board. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. This was done in 2018. I can explain if you'd like. Please. Uh, when we submitted to the agenda, it had the proper language in some, some way when it came back for the official agenda, it said uh, uh, spread on minutes, which is about a thousand pages. So, okay. move on to correct it. Okay, thank you. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Motion <coughs> carries. <coughs> Item 33, order approving the open door Homeless Coalition request for reimbursement in the amount of $522,275.06 in wash number 422 for the emergency rental assistance program to be paid from 069 686 700 
and for administrative expenses in the amount of 52275 invoice number 421 to be paid from 069 686 556. Motion. Second discussion. The administrative expenses, I presume, is, is uh, uh, the Open Door uh, Homeless Coalition to administer this program. I think. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, yeah, she's here. Ms. Simmons, if you want to come up and speak. Yeah. And we don't it, it, max. It, it, is, mm -hmm. it is a percentage that you get. 10%. 10%. Yes. Thank you. Y'all are doing a great job. Today. Yes. Thanks. Do you have anything you want to comment on or uh, discuss with us? Everything's good? Very pleased with the support and things are moving along. Fantastic. Okay. It was an issue. Some of them have been drinking. Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? Yeah. All, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Item 34, order approving payment of $178,845 in Boston number 2022-01 to the Pine Gap Mental Health Resources for monthly county contributions, January 2022, payable from 001-400-760. Can we get a motion? Second. Discussion? Um, I have discussed, well, I don't know if I should bring it up at the end of the discussion, but um, when we had this payment to Gulfport Memorial last time. I don't think we had all of the um, information that we had set forth that we would have. Like, uh, is the if the, um, the the critical center was open? I'm sorry, I forgot the name of it right now. The yes. mental health association where we put in the um, crisis center. Yes, yeah, CSU. Uh, it wasn't filled. Uh, we didn't have any reason why it wasn't filled. We had asked for that so that we could keep up with it. Y'all remember that? Beverly might be able to help me on that. Yeah, I wasn't here, but um, yeah, we, we probably need to ask them. Um, if, if they were. We're talking about the payment that went to go for John, the payment of the boy we're talking about, the for yeah. behaviors payment. Talking to her, I'm sorry, I missed He was explaining to me about why Hancock Bank is the only one. Go ahead. Um, He's not the only one. Oh. They get the majority of investments. Gotcha. We were talking about mental health and then we asked for a backup that would uh, include why the um, CSU wasn't used and that wasn't in there. Well, do you uh, <clears throat> why it wasn't used when we're... When we're sending you know, people to Memorial when uh, our CSU well, wasn't used. Well, a lot, a lot of times used. they can't handle the medical condition that they're in. And but, they, but, I, I'm sorry. I don't doubt, doubt that. I just, we, we had asked for that as backup when we. The explanation. The explanation of why the CSU was not able to take. Well, he's been. Yeah. He's, I can get, I, we, we print. We get that. We go, we put together a spreadsheet on every incident, okay? Uh, for instance, they just told us verbally they're not taking anyone this week because COVID. But that's not in the group email. They had to tell us verbally. So we're trying to confirm in writing that they have COVID at the facility. And they so, closed it. And they so, closed it. We, well, no more can be in. They don't want any that through the system because of COVID. I think but, we um, Yes, it, it's a lot of things. For instance, sometimes <laughs> we have six writs issued in one day. They can only process three a day because of their personnel. They don't, you know, obviously, or not like a hospital. So then you have to send them to other facilities. This is for pre-hearing. I'd like to ask the board that we ask, I mean, we're paying a lot of money to, to have them run that place. And if they're not going to be able to take our people and we're going to have to pay double the form basically yeah, I, i've been and saying that since day one i think we need to talk with get them in here and discuss one it. of the concerns that i've had and i mentioned this to other people john included is that what appeared to be the most re reasons that they rejected because of what they call quote security mm -hmm. well heck they should have security there and that's do whatever what they, they need are. to get. That's right. That's part of it. Yeah. So what happens is we wind up paying double. 
Exactly. We're paying CSU than we're paying a private hospital. Well, no, you're not. On I'm, pre hearing, you're not paying anything for when they're pre hearing hearing placed without a payer source in the emergency room. The hospitals are absorbing that. So it's they're not getting paid at all. When they're committed and they're indigent, and, you, and the state hospital has a waiting list and will not take them, then your contract for these other facilities kick in. Then and we only pay for the indigent. Indigent only. Indigent care that goes to them. Right. The hospitals are handling the other. Or they will accept those that have a payer source. <clears throat> exactly. And do so we do our best. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Do you think it's acceptable to use COVID as an excuse to not allow our patients to get mental health? Um, well, I was going to ask that this. question. What do it's you a do? facility. What, what do they go? Well, right. the, the difference is this. CSU and the state mental health will tell you that pre-hearing placement, that's to hold them to be a vet to get the assessment. Right. That is not their duty. Okay, they take them, they, they will take them and hold them prior to a hearing. The duty of the mental health and treatment is after it's determined by the court they need medical or uh, psychiatric treatment. So at that point, then CSU has, to, has a role, and so does the state hospital. I thought CSU took them to evaluate them. Well, they, they don't. They make a judge evaluate? Well, no, 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 I'm sorry. They, they do not, for instance, they're eight to five. So the pre-evaluation is conducted by the State Mental Health Center, which is on Broad Avenue. They're eight to five, Monday through Friday. Pre-evaluation. Pre-evaluation. So the statute says we're supposed to do that first. We have, I've developed a plan with the sheriff. They now take them to Broad Avenue first. And the reason for that is you have over 400 writs issued a year, is to have them pre-evaluated before they're placed. Some people are alcoholics or drugs, and they really aren't mental. So they're able to determine whether that person should really go forward with mental commitment. The sheriff then directs them, if they meet criteria, to uh, take them to a designated facility that we have located. Which would be C C CSU may be C one, one. Okay. and if they're full, then we have to go to emergency room. Right. And then the hearing, and then we do our best to place them somewhere. But the issue, I think, is you're, put, you're having to send them somewhere else because they're not full, but they have an excuse for that. And I want to know if their excuses well, that, are valid. Well, that's my issue. This has always been my position. Harrison County taxpayers pay the most in the state of Mississippi for mental health services, $2.1 million. How they staff CSU <clears throat> is on them. And they say that that $2.1 million isn't dedicated to Harrison County. It goes into their pool where they run the other 12 counties, too. Supervisor so, uh, Bronco, yes, I texted Ms. Mona at Pine Belt. She said they're not taking more because, not because of COVID, because they have 15 and are getting one more involuntary today from Merritt. So I, have to I just relayed what they told me this That's morning. What she just texted. Well, well, she's not at CSU. <laughs> I can understand when they exceed the beds. That's yes. an issue. Yes. Nobody right. can do anything about that. They exceed the beds available. That's it. Right. That, that, that can. But I am concerned that if they're turning you down because of security reasons and they, you know that sort, of, they security needs to be provided. They have a four hundred thousand dollar grant mm -hmm. that was awarded back in June for security. And I have reached out to them. I contacted all the chiefs of police and had gave them the contact information for their off-duty officers. I hadn't heard a word. Uh, Troy, you're our appointment, right? <clears throat> could you could you bring that to the board meeting, to their board meeting, and, and just tell them about our concerns? Yeah. And, um, and tell them that it's something that we need to address and they need to come or do a report to us or, or follow well, through. Yep, if, uh, 
for it and can put it on paper and give it to me, then I'll, I'll address each, each one of the tribes. It might be, it probably different than this that we vote on here, but if we need, I'll make that motion if in the next, um, if the next opportunity. Well, if you need a motion, but if we can get Troy to check on the security issue, since that needs well, he wants something in I do know, that they, I do know that they have a, they're through the grant, they are working on it and they're talking about hiring um, off duty police officers to do it. I don't, I don't know where that grant is right now or where the money is or if they can pay anybody yet, but I do know that they are, that is a concern and they are working on it. The old, if you all recall, and I'll say it again, under the, when we had the, uh, the Region 12, I believe, or whatever it was here that we had to get out. The, C, the CSU was banned. The security, they had security there because mm -hmm. I, mean, I remember that became an issue because they couldn't get people because they couldn't right. pay them what they needed to pay them. You recall that? Mm -hmm. And then finally, the board, we agreed to, to appropriate more funds so that they could raise their salary so they could get what they call, quote, muscle, which was security. So I thought that was part of what we were paying for. So did I. Apparently not. Yeah. But that's not why. But that's not what. The, that's not. Yes. The yeah, voluntary process. Beds, that's not what the issue is now. But we have been told that some have been turned down mm -hmm. because of security. Right. And some of these, a large number of these are repeaters. When you have someone that's been in the business down here on the coast that knows these individuals because they're going through the cycle again and they know how disruptive they've been right and they just don't have the, the personnel to they're not allowed to touch them so i don't know how they would have security if they're not allowed to touch them right? the, the whole thing about it is john mental health is a very difficult situation to deal with and that's all right any, any, anybody that's dealing with those situations no it's well, very difficult but you gotta you got to do something. Well, the 24th, you'll have that, that visit. Right. Hopefully and that I think will. that, to me, that, uh, anyway, yeah, my opinion of the county. What will happen in the future? We have unique. a board meeting that day. The first thing that morning. I know. I talked to the president about it, and uh, we, we were going to, and even uh, got the county administrator involved, too, that possibly we could have, Moved it to a nine o'clock instead of nine thirty. We definitely need to have that meeting. Right, it, and it's, it, all five of you should attend. It's, it's a great option if the board chooses to do that. Okay, yes, sir. What we got is um, yeah, we'll, we should have strictly just claims on that on that uh, twenty fourth meeting. So we should be able to get in and get out, and get over there, and then Sheriff will try to get something away. And it is at Gulfport, so we'll be yes, there. Yes, sir. Yeah, and then the Sheriff can. I think he just, didn't, he, didn't you ask for something writing from the board? Yeah, so I'm saying just to write something right. just to, yeah, to present. <laughs> okay. okay, without any further discussion, uh, we've been motion is properly second. So all in favor of the motion on item 34, say aye. Aye. All opposed, okay. motion. I'm sorry. Yeah. There. <laughs> That's no problem. Item 35, order approving travel for Julia Enclave Veterans of Harris to attend the NAC VSO Legislative and Leadership Summit on February 21st and 25th, 2022 in Washington, D.C. Motion. Second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. All opposed. The motion carried by the 36 order approving travel for any supervisor, county administrator, and board of attorneys to attend the 2022 NACO Legislative Conference in Washington, D.C. Motion. Second. Discussion. We need to probably add. Um, who was it wanted to go? Bill Lane? Yes, Bill. Oh, we're going to pay his way. This is the state office. Yeah. Uh, Should they add that? They probably have it in their budget for his travel. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. Yeah. clears throat> okay. Uh, do we get a motion yeah. on item 2036? We got one. Yeah, Second, yeah. okay. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed. Motion carries item 37. Authorize the budget amendment of fiscal year 2020 through 2021. Purchase orders paid in fiscal year 2021 2022. Can we get a motion? Motion. Second. Discussion. 
What's is this for these, you, Jennifer? These are, not, um, these are both these are videos that were issued in last year's fiscal year that got paid in this current one. So to the cover of the cover that we don't have. Because okay. it's, it's making them over budget. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, all in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed. Okay, motion carries. Item 38, order adjudicating the tax sales of August 31, 2020, on tax parcel number 1306 1908 for 2019 taxes as erroneous and thus voided ab initio and for related purposes. Motion. Second. Congratulations on pronouncing it. <laughs> 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 I, I never did. State the reason for these um, okay. voiding of these sales. This mm -hmm. one is a Harrison County School District parcel that was bought by the school district and therefore it was exempt and should not have been sold. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All opposed. The motion carries item 39 order adjudicating the tax sale of August 30th, 2021 <coughs> on tax parcel number 0109 1702 04 for 2020 taxes, erroneous, and thus voided at an issue and for related purposes. Motion. Second. Well, Mr. Kent, this one was due Second. to a serviceman being employed and uh, therefore also was exempt. <coughs> Thank you. All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All opposed. Motion carries. Item 4 to order adjudicated the tax sales of August 31st, 2020 for tax parcel number listed below for 2019 taxes as erroneous and thus voided ab initio and for related purposes. Any motion? Motion. Second. Second discussion. And Mr. Kent, this one was uh, so numerous parcels that have matured to the state and therefore they were exempt as well. Order. All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All opposed. Mr. Carey. Item 41 order adjudicating the authorized expenditure is listed as necessary to advertise the opportunities and resources of Harrison County. Motion. Okay. Discussion. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed. Aye. Motion carried. <clears throat> Moving right along. We have a 10 30 hand, but we still can go around the horn. See what we have in here. No uh, I have one. Uh, we've received the appraisal for the property uh, located in the Iberville. It was the old police station. I'd like to have the authority to request um, sell to sell it. Motion. Second. Second. Okay. Any, any further discussion on, on that order? All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Yeah, motion carries. That's all I have. Not in. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> me too. I'm glad I took a breath this morning. Miss <laughs> uh, Supervisor Powell. Um, so, um, the Secretary of State, you know, we reached out to him about Tidelands, and he will be joining us February 14th in Biloxi at noon, if that's good for y'all. Is he bringing us a Valentine? That's a good idea. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Chocolates to enter. That's okay, all I have. Okay. <laughs> Mr. John. Yeah, Mr. President, board member. Uh, statutorily, you have the authority to swap out a legal declared holiday. Last year, you brought Mardi Gras to swap back to the President's Day. So that's on the minutes. This statute 3-3-7 says a spread on the minutes if you intend to go back to uh, declaring Mardi Gras a holiday for the county. Motion to declare Mardi Gras a holiday. Second. <laughs> I'll go now. Second. In place of the President's Day. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Oh, and her motion was in addition to In addition to Well, yeah. You're not allowed to correct your own. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good try. I saw it on the intranet <laughs> being a holiday, <laughs> so we got to fix that. Okay, we, we had we, we so did. The holiday is only for that Tuesday of Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. We uh we did. 
motion for that. So we uh, ready to vote, call the vote out, and pay that motion. Say aye. Yeah. Uh, hold. Aye. Uh, aye. <laughs> <laughs> Volcan Roulette. Mr. President, uh, we do have two pending items that we request go in the executive <coughs> session, one being potential litigation uh, regarding, excuse me, Margaritaville, and the other two being a pending litigation. Um, this is three separate cases, but same issues, RW Development, Long Beach Harbor, and the Aldridge case. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll Take your look we'll out. take a look we'll take that. Yeah, we can go ahead and take a, we're going to take a break. We have yeah. 1020, we'll be back in about five minutes, 1026. We have a 1030. Go to item uh, 14 on the zoning administrative service. Okay, I'll go ahead and read uh, that. Uh, appeal filed by Dana and Jimmy Ruiz. They are the applicants in the case on behalf of Corey and Candace Johnson. Um, Appealing the Planning Commission's decision to deny a planning uh, a zoning case file two one 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 HC one eight nine for a zoning map amendment and conditional use permit filed by Corey and Candace Johnson for Jimmy and Dana Ruiz. That's the property owners requesting approval to change the zoning district classification of a one acre parcel of land. The property is currently zoned as a C one very low density residential district. The request is to change the zoning district classification to an R2 medium density residential district for the purpose of subdividing property and placing a manufactured home on the new lot as shown in the site plan. The placement of a manufactured home in the R2 district requires a conditional use permit from the planning commission. Subject property is located at 21438 Mennonite Road. The subject property is a portion of Ed Alarm Tax Parcel Number 0506M-01-009.001. In, in this case, uh, the parents want to create a one-acre lot for their kids to have a uh, manufactured home on the property. I believe it's a four-and-a-half-acre parcel. Uh, so the remainder of the property would remain zoned E1. The, the new little parcel would be uh, go to the R2 district, which requires a conditional use permit for a, plan for a manufactured home. We do have rules for the uh, appeal, and uh, everyone's been sent this out. Uh, there's a maximum of three speakers per side. Each speaker has a maximum of 10 minutes to speak. Uh, there are quite a few exhibits that have already been created. I believe there's a new exhibit uh, that reiterates what was said at the meeting that, that will be presented to you. Uh, in this case, the applicants are the appellants, so they'll speak first. Uh, the opposition will have a chance to speak at the same rules, three speakers, a maximum of 10 minutes each. Uh, and then uh, the, the applicants will have a chance to rebut at the end. Okay. Sounds good. So we get the first speaker up for the applicant. You want to come up and uh, state your call. So if, you, if you can give your name and your address for the, for the record. Okay. Once you start, Mr. Mayor, my name is Dana Ruiz, 21438 Midnight Road. Um, we've lived there over 28 years. The reason for them moving there is to help me and my sister take care of my 95 year old grandmother. Um, my grandchildren would be closer to us also. I don't, I don't know what else I need to say. And where did your grandmother live? She lives right next door to me. A separate four and a half yes. acres parcel. How many acres total is your land? Nine. And you currently use how many? I'm sorry. Four point five. And you're asking to do what exactly? Give my grandparent, my grandchildren's parents, an acre to put them over home. One acre. Yes, ma'am. Adjoining. You're not adding fencing. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Digging. No, ma'am. Okay. It has a pre-existing septic tank. And we hook into our water. May I? Okay. May I? Yes. Um, would this be, um, we, do you plan to put any more mobile homes no, there? No, ma'am. Okay. I think someone no, the land goes to the grandchildren after my husband and I are gone. All that goes to them. So you're not trying to put a mobile home park out No, ma'am. No, ma'am. There's a mobile home park down the road from us. Are they going to be building a house, or what are they? No, ma'am. So you just want to give it to them? Yes. Not to do anything? Right. They're just putting their mobile home there to live by us, 
So and then they are we're, putting a mobile home? Yes, ma'am. On the one acre. Gotcha. I'm sure, uh, Patrick, the opposition will uh, point out, but is there any other mobile homes in that area? Or are there any more than one acre? In the large area, mobile homes? in the, the, the broad area, there's other manufactured homes, but in the immediate area, only her home is a manufactured home. The survey showed it as a single family frame home. That, so on her four and a half acre parcel, she's got a manufactured home, and she's asking for one more. I, I saw that in the transcript that uh, you had indicated that survey indicated that it was a stick belt house. Yes, sir. And, but it's, it's a double wide <clears throat> mobile home <throat> manufacturing. How did they miss that? Well, they could have recited it. There's a, you know, there's, uh, there's any number of reasons for that. So you had to. There's a gate at there. I couldn't, and, and everything's hidden behind a little band of wood. So I went to the driveway, but I wasn't able to see any home. Yeah, there's the wood all the way around me. So the mobile home that your grandchildren will have, is it visible from the street? Um, in between the woods, yeah, you can partially see it, but if you're only if you're looking for it. If you drive by, you're not going to see it. Uh, that's my question. Now, so that I'm clear, you have nine acres. That's Total between me and my, my grandmother. Yes, it's all there together. Nine, There's a fence down the middle with her section and my section. Okay, so there's Two separate driveways. And then you want to take one of the of mine and give it to your okay. Yes, I'm just making sure that I have. Yes, I was confused when you said it was mm -hmm. nine acres. It's total, but there's a fence down the middle. She's on one side, and I'm on this side. Good thing you put your mother on. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just trying to be funny this morning. Anyway, thank you. Yeah, anybody else have anything? Okay, do you have anyone else who wants to speak on your behalf? Ma'am. Ma'am, is there anyone else who wants to speak on your behalf? No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, my sister does live in a mobile home next to me also. Okay. But she's on. She's on my grandmother's side. So there's two manufactured homes next door. Yeah. And this would be two guys. So, so right. not anything further. Are, the, are those. Uh, on the other uh, side. Grandfathered in. Uh, yes. Yes. So they were existing there prior to the zoning. Yes. yes. Get nothing further from the from the fellow uh, the opposition. We want to come up and, and he just indicated what our rules are. So if you want to come up and uh, Miss Mayor, kind of be our time here. <clears throat> you state your name and your address for the record, please. Yes, sir. My name is Janelle Blom. I'm with Dukes Dukes Keating and Panic at 2909 13th Street, Gulfport, Mississippi. Supervisors, Mr. President, may I have proceeded? Yes, please. All right. We, we did have a large showing at the um, Planning Commission meeting, and as you've seen in the, in the record, you have 21 letters signed by 29 neighbors that are opposing this parcel. This um, this shows, and this the smaller version of this was in your original packets at the planning commission. We just enlarged it for. I'll um, white then. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> Here's the subject property. This I I don't recall hearing at the planning commission anything about a nine acre. It was this her parcel is four and a half acres, and they're trying to take one acre of that. This is the four and a half acre parcel. These parcels right here are Mr. Miller's. And just kind of for precedent purposes, uh, y'all have previously denied an application for this 4.7 acre parcel to have a manufactured home. And there was a manufactured home trying to, or actually it was already there and it was required to be moved by y'all because it was not properly um, permitted on this 19 acre parcel down here, right? very near the, the applicant's parcel. Now, the 21 letters that we've got in here, where did those 21 people These live? pink, these most represent all of, all of the opposition. Most of them are on Mennonite Road, you correct the address. Yeah. Right, and, and there were more that That's appeared in person at the Planning Commission meeting that are not reflected. This is just, this was prepared in advance of the Planning Commission meeting. 
based on the letters. Um, for example, this is, I believe, about close to 60 acres right here, and the owners are, are present. They were present at the Planning Commission meeting also, and they've also opposed it and just noted for um, that with their 60 acres, perhaps they could have 61 acre lots with manufactured homes on them. Uh, as, as Pat mentioned, it's currently E1. We're skipping over everything and going to R2 so that they can have a one acre parcel and then they still need um, approval to put the manufactured home on it even if it's rezoned. Um, We're including the two at the same time. Is that right? Ms. Ruiz's home uh, Sorry. is not being affected, so uh, it's only the no, one. What I'm trying to say is if, if you, they're asking to change the zoning classification mm -hmm. of the one acre yes, and also asking for the conditional per, uh, permit at the uh, same time. We're considering both at the same yes, time sir. on the one acre. Both requests on, on one acre. Thank you for that clarification, Mr. Lowry. Uh, as the opposition stated at the Planning Commission meeting and in these letters, they bought these properties out there for the country atmosphere, for the large lots, for the agriculture, uh, so they wouldn't be on top of each other, which is, is what will happen if these one-acre parcels continue to be uh, approved. And you did have a, a tax map that's... With, these were all in the record. I don't know if you'd like hard copies to look at, if that helps you. I'd like that. Or not. May I approach you? Yes, thank you. Thank you. I'm just a paper person. Yes, okay. <laughs> I'll thank you. This is in the record. Yeah, yes, sir. All of that was presented. As you can see from the tax maps, most of the parcels here are zoned A1 and E1. Most of them are larger than the four and a half acre parcel at issue. Um, there are some smaller parcels, but a lot are under common ownership. For example, Mr. Miller has four parcels right here. So that's really what the trend is in this neighborhood is to combine parcels to make even larger ones. Uh, the applicants did state it in their application that the trend is to go to one acre parcels, but that is just not supported by the tax maps, um, by the tax records. The, the trend is combining parcels to, to create larger ones. While it is understandable uh, the reasons that the applicant stated, I, I would note, and I'm not disputing this, there was nothing about taking care of an elderly grandmother in either of the um, application to rezone or the conditional use permit. The first time that came up was actually at the Planning Commission meeting. But whether, regardless of the need, it's family related, um, that's understandable, but that does not alleviate the requirement to comply with the zoning ordinances and to present the necessary proof um, to support the rezoning. Um, also, this was also noted at the Planning Commission meeting based on the, the address that the Johnsons use. They're about 12 minutes away from, from this parcel, so they're not, they're not too far. Um, in order to successfully rezone, as y'all know, an applicant must show by clear and convincing evidence a mistake in the original zoning that's not been alleged. So their option then is to show that the character of the neighborhood has changed to such an extent to justify rezoning and that a public need exists for the rezoning. Their requested changes that they've given are purely personal reasons for this particular site. They haven't shown a change in the character of the neighborhood. They haven't shown a public need. All that they've said in support of their application is we need this to be rezoned. We need to, we want to put a manufactured home. We want to make the, the parcel smaller. Um, those are just, they're simply private needs. There's nothing been alleged about the condition of the neighborhood or change in condition of the neighborhood, um, nor any public need. I have a question, if I may, for yes. Pat. Um, is this conditional use, so it will expire if the, or is it a... Uh, a conditional use expires after six months if they don't place the manufactured home. 
So currently they just have a designated area of the four and a half acres that they want to create a home site uh, for the kids. But isn't conditional use meaning that as long as that mobile home is there, if they conditional, then every six months they have to come in and no, 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 this would be a permanent forevermore approval. She's talking about a, a, a temporary, use, temporary permit. use permit. You're talking about a temporary use permit. <clears throat> temporary is every six months. This is a conditional use permit. Once the, it will be permanent. I thought conditional ran out as well. Temp no. Only if you don't uh, activate it. If they went through yeah. the process and got it approved and then never did put the mobile home, which occasionally happens, mm -hmm. then they would have to reapply. So they do not have a mobile home there now? No, ma'am. No. Okay. Oh, On the one acre. Um, there is one on the four and a half acre. She's yes, talking about the one. I'm talking about the one that they're yeah, I, was, I was, somebody had told me that. The I next case, was one there's there a manufactured home yeah. on the property already. It's been that business. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Given, oh, did you have no, no question? I said I apologize. <laughs> I have to ask when I'm thinking about it or I'll forget that. I understand completely. Given the evidence and has been submitted by the applicant so far, a finding of public need based on, on their evidence would, I would argue, result in illegal spot zoning. Uh, Mississippi Supreme Court stated in Beard versus City of Ridgeland, spot zoning is considered an arbitrary or discriminatory zoning decision determined on a case-by-case -case basis. It's invalid primarily when used primarily for the private interest of the owner of the property and not related to the community as a whole. The one constant where zoning ordinances have been invalidated due to spot zoning is when they were signed to favor someone. The applicants here have been very candid in their need that this is a private need and it's over the objection of many, as you can see, in the neighborhood. In addition to meeting those requirements of a change in, in need or a, a change in condition of public need, your very own comprehensive plan uh, places this property in a G1, which is Restricted Growth District. This is primarily low density rural development. The goals that y'all have identified in that comprehensive plan for G1 district are to support the retention of existing agricultural, forestry, and rural residential uses and to support the rezoning of areas that are not currently E1 or A1, which this is currently E1, so that, <coughs> that is, it's not supported by the comprehensive plan there. And amendments to the zoning ordinance to allow families to locate more than one residence in an A1 district or not an A1 district. So none of those justifications in the comprehensive plan are before you today. Um, the Mississippi Supreme Court has given guidance on the type of evidence necessary to support a change in condition. And they said if it's, um, if it's there, it should be very easy to show. The, the record should show a map showing the circumstances of the area, the change in the neighborhood, statistics showing a public need, and such other proof so that a rational informed judgment may be formed as to what the governing board considers. When there's no such proof in the record, we must conclude that there was neither change nor public need. Tax maps show there is not a change in the neighborhood, and the comprehensive plan shows that there should not be a change in this neighborhood. Is my time almost? Yeah, you got one. Okay, thank you. Um, in Beard versus Ridgeland, the Supreme Court has also cautioned amendments to zoning ordinances must be made after careful consideration because investments in land and property are significant financial decisions and a landowner should be able to rely upon the zoning to maintain the use and value of their property. And it's shown by those letters and it's shown by all the people that have taken time to come to come in. They have said that also. They, they made financial decisions based on the current condition of the property. And they have asked you, and I will ask you on their behalf, also to find this proposed use is not harmonious with the surrounding neighborhood and it will in fact be detrimental to the economic welfare of this community Thank you. for those reasons we would ask that you um, affirm the decision of the planning commission Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Shot clock. Yes. 
Hi, my name is Jimmy Miller, 21332 Mennonite Road, Gulfport, Mississippi, 39503. I'll be brief just to recap. Um, most of the people in this room live in one of these pink squares. Um, also remind the board that this, this blob of nine acres that's black, I don't mean to call it a blob, but the black area, there's already two manufactured homes there. This would be the third. So now the other two were pre-zoning. Grant that. So, um, just want to remind everybody the map recap. There was a trailer denied, um, um, excuse me, a manufactured home denied here and one removed here. So, there is case precedence. Um, you know, I enjoy my grandkids coming over um, as much as anybody else. Um, Sunday night, I enjoy it when they leave. Um, <laughs> but th their, their kids are 7.6 miles away. A 12 minute drive from where they live to where they want to relocate. So I, I get the family thing, we all have a heart, but with the character of our neighborhood, agriculture, three to five acre parcels, it just doesn't fit. Uh, a lot of us have spent a lot of money. There's two $500,000 homes going up a little further up Mennonite Road. Um, it's, the zoning is working, it's coming along nice, but this just does not fit the character of our neighborhood. And Mr. Harmon already submitted this, but I had the, the mapping to show how far the family lives if anybody would like to see it. And all this was already pre-submitted. So. Otherwise, I'm going to turn it over to Tracy, okay. unless y'all have any questions. Yes, you Yes, you Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Tracy Craig. I'm at 21223 Mennonite Road. Um, we've owned a property for a little over five years. Um, so I'm just going to dive into it. Um, as far as taking care of family goes, I am 100% at that point. My mother-in-law is on hospice. I am her primary caregiver. She lives over an hour away. It would have been wonderful to have been able to put her on our property, but I knew I didn't want to do that to character of our neighborhood. I didn't want to put our neighbors through that, the whole scenario. Other than that, as far as helping with kids, get that. Army wife. My husband retired after 23 years in the Army. I raised five kids by myself with him being gone over 85% of the time. All of those things I have compassion for and can understand. However, when you look at our neighborhood, my husband, like I said, spent 23 years in the military, got injured. Our dream was to buy property to hand over to our kids, to have a place to get away from town because town has too many triggers. We need to be out and alone and have some distance from everyone. So choosing to buy property on Mill Night Road fit that. We looked at other properties, bigger, nicer houses. <laughs> Ours is not the nicest house on the road, but we have the big land and property that makes up for it. The reason why we didn't go with the bigger, nicer houses is the area that they were around. I don't want to live on Shaw Road. I don't want to live on CC Camp Road. That is what I'm scared we're setting a precedent to move forward and turn Mennonite Road into if we start approving one acre lots for mobile homes. Um, again, I can understand I have five kids. One day at a time, someone might need mom and daddy and need to come home on property. So I can have compassion and understand I don't know what's going to happen in the future with my family. So while I get that, <coughs> it's still an investment. We didn't work hard for all this time to pick a property that is this large and cost this much only to see our property values go down. We didn't. We would like to preserve that. And it's my understanding that the Planning and Zoning Commission's future plan for this area was to keep a large property, agricultural, larger houses. So we rely on y'all to stick with that plan and maintain the integrity of our homes and the price value and just, it's an investment for us. It's not personal, like I said. It is completely understandable what they're wanting to do, but this is the reason why we are against it. So. Does the board have any, any, any questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, Can I just make one request, since not everyone gets to well, see, if you could show on a short hand. Yeah, we have time, I'm sorry. No, I mean, she's got time. Renee, they got time left. I'm sorry. 
She I'm should have to have three speakers. Yeah. Yeah. They've had three, got... but she was already an original speaker. Yeah. Do, do seven, they have time yeah. left? So you got seven minutes. I, I would just like to ask first, since not everyone gets to, to stand up and talk to you, Correct. if you could have a show of hands of anybody that's present today and opposed to the project. <laughs> I don't know what more to say. All I know is I've been out there over 28 years. Um, yeah, it's a nice neighborhood. But like I said in my appeal letter, there are mobile home, manufactured homes all over. Even down by the new development to the left of their driveway, if you go a mile to a mile and a half, there's five. It's not like mine is the only one out there. That whole Mennonite Road, CC Camp Road, Gulf Haven, they're all over the place. It's not like I'm asking to put one in a place that has none. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they're everywhere. There's over 30 if you combine the three roads, Gulf Haven, Mennonite, and CC. Um, I have a little question. If they were to say you could put a mobile home there but stop with the parcel request, would that be something you would What does that mean? Like, you don't parcel it out, you don't change the parcel, you just put another mobile home. And I'm not saying that's I not can't I'm just the, the, That's not allowed? It's no. not allowed. You I have to do that. Sorry. Do okay. That. Right. You can't. That's not allowed. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, I don't have anything in, in, back then. When was the last one that was put out there? No. Yes. Yes. Are you ready? Pat, I'm prepared to make a motion to uphold the uh, planning commission's uh, denial. And one of the questions, the reason why I wanted to ask most of those trailers are pre zoning uh, orders. They grandfathered in. So uh, I think the planning commission was correct in that there is no uh, uh, change in the neighborhood. In fact, that the uh, we have in fact denied some in that area. So my motion is to uh, deny the appeal and uphold the planning commission's decision. Second. Second for the discussion. All in favor of that deny the appeal say aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carried. I make a motion that we're going to close session to discuss. I don't think any of you disagree. I make a motion to go into executive session to discuss the two items that um, Mr. Hollis said. What are they? Mr. Hollis, what are the two items? Uh, we do have a little bit of an audible uh, with the Secretary of State moving to moving to 14. We are taking off the pending litigation regarding development of Aldrich cases in the Long Beach Harbor. We are adding another one to replace it, and that will be potential litigation, criminal and civil. I cannot hear. I, 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 I made, Mr. President, I think they're concerned about the next hearing. The next hearing is at 11 30. I'm sorry. Okay, we just saw 9 30. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's at eleven thirty. We're going to have some other business. With them. We'll be back in here. Come back, guys. At okay. Okay. At exactly that. Yeah. I need to say something about the next. Say yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, so the, the replacement will be potential litigation, civil and criminal dealing with the wool market ball fields. Great. What was it about? The, I'm sorry about the wool market ball fields? Yes, vandalism. 
there's some vandalism at the ball fields and there's an issue with restitution as far as the damage and um, the, the uh, child who did the damage oh, as it's far a as getting now. him mm -hmm. to actually okay. perform this restitution. I was just wondering yeah. why that would come on the executive session as juvenile. Okay. I make a motion. Second. Second. Yes, second. I'm going to take the motion to say aye. I'll right. oppose the motion to carry. She got a motion, got a second. Second, Rebecca? Yes. Okay. No, she made the motion. She made, the motion. She made, the motion. Uh, she made it. Oh, sorry. Second. Back then, Marla, okay. not now. All in favor of the motion say aye. Uh, uh, motion to carry. Okay. okay. Uh, Sorry for the delay. As previously mentioned, and no action was taken. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate y'all. <laughs> we appreciate y'all's patience. We just have to do this. We have to kind of take care. Thank y'all so much for uh, for your patience. Okay, Patrick. Yes, sir. Appeal filed by Steve and Patty Harrison of the Planning Commission's decision to approve case file number 211HC186 for a zoning map amendment and conditional use permit filed by Darren and Jean uh, Tishner, requesting approval to change the zoning district classification of a one acre parcel of land. The property is currently zoned as an E1 very low density residential district. The request is to change the zoning district classification to the R2 district for the purpose of subdividing the property. Uh, the changing of manufactured home lot dimensions in the E1 or R2 district require a conditional use permit from the Planning Commission. Let me go over the rules for the appeal first. Um, in this case, the applicants were approved by the Planning Commission, so it's the neighbors that filed the appeal. So uh, the appellants will be the neighbors, and they'll speak first. You're limited to a maximum of three speakers uh, and a maximum of 10 minutes each. Uh, then the uh, applicants will have a chance to tell their story, and then the rebuttal by the uh, uh, appellants uh, after that. Okay. So uh, in this case, there's an existing manufactured home that on the E1 property that's requested to be subdivided. It's been a recent replacement of a uh, manufactured home, so uh, they still need to get the mobile home permit if they were approved to finally set up the home. It's not currently lived in. So um, with that, we'll start with the appellants. Oh, Stephen Patty Harrison. That's probably for a nice couple clarification. Okay. So, uh, this is very similar to the one that was in the sense of the, of the one acre breakout yes, and, and the, a, a, a conditional use permit, both the zoning and the conditional use permit. Was the trailer that was replaced, was it grand, uh, Was it a grandfathered in trailer? Yes. Based on the zoning. So if it has not been occupied within that's, one I'm year. I'm asking you, did it? That's what I'm trying to get to. First grandfathered, I assume. Yes, sir. It was old enough to be grandfathered in. Did it lose its grandfather rights in the sense that it's been not occupied for a year? Do you know? I would say that it has lost it because we wouldn't it have. It did lose. We wouldn't have. Um, we still would have had to do the uh, rezoning to create a smaller lot size around it. But we wouldn't have included the conditional use permit if it was lived in within one year. Yeah, if it had continuously been. And if I'm mistaken, the, the applicants can If the trailer, the older trailer, the original trailer had been continuously lived in, it would have a grandfather right and would not have needed any zoning or anything. I mean, it would need the zoning to create a smaller than three acre lot surrounding it. If it's grandfathered in, nothing would have occurred. In this case, 
petitioners want to unless they create a one acre lot surrounding that home the home was already on a larger parcel but in order to facilitate a real estate deal, they, they, want to make a they, they they want to but what i'm trying to say what i'm trying to clarify before we get into their testimony in my own mind the older trailer was there you don't know if it had lost its grandfather rights or not i believe that it has you think it has yes. okay uh, did did it require any zoning or any anything in our ordinance to replace that older trailer? Yes, it did require. If it's been vacant more than one year, it requires a new condition. It, it required permission from the zoning commission to replace the older trailer, yes. and that was not did not occur. I, I, I believe that's the case. Can I say something? You'll get your chance. chance. Yeah, we get, we get Joe. We just want to get, there, get the uh, get everything up front first. So, if not now, the appellant. The appellant knows the name. Okay. Y'all want to come up? And he he gave you the directions, so we'll follow those directions. Yeah. Commission. The commission. Same thing. Okay. Renee, you ready? Okay. Um, Renee. Good day. Um, to all the board members, my name is Stephen. I'm with my wife, Patty Harrison. Uh, we live at 14072 Big Creek Road. Um, my wife and I have owned the 72 acres down Rosebud Court and opposite of Rose Boulevard, where the uh, property is, and behind uh, Mr. Tishner's family property since 1998. Um, that older trailer has not been lived in for a number of years. And I don't know if it was ever there legally. Um, well, if it was there prior, excuse me, if okay. I'm, not, I'm not taking your time, but if it were there prior to the zoning ordinance, which was in 2001, then it was legal. <coughs> um, it probably it was. Fathered in. It was absolutely yeah. probably there. Um, with regards to the Harrison County Planning Board approval of subdividing the property located at 14071, Big Creek Road, which is actually on Rose Boulevard. The members of the group self-named the Big Creek Neighborhood Coalition opposes this action. In the zoning administration approval letter, um, the board incorrectly summarized that the basis of this recommendation is changing condition and which the proposed development is compatible with the neighborhood as demonstrated in the application. This is not a realistic assessment. At the time of the initial hearing in 18 November, three property owners who were affected were present at that hearing. It was also stated during that hearing that six property members opposed the request. Um, as submitted in our appeal letter of 14, um, um, our appeal letter, we have 14 property owners, 14 property owners um, that have now signed a petition in opposition to that action. Um, I need to make clear at this point, we're not opposing the placement of a manufactured home, but rather the rezoning of the property from E1, an accurate description of the neighborhood, um, to R2, which is not in line with the neighbor's desires um, for the future of our small community. Um, I ask you to refer to us to make sure we've got 14 signatures. Um, an expansion of the Harrison County Online GIS service clearly demonstrates that most properties in the area are greater than three acres, whether they have trailers or not, um, and in accordance with county regulations. There are some variances, um, like where an immediate family member, example, children, were provided a one-acre breakout for their parent, um, from their parents' property. As a matter of fact, Mr. Tishner petitioned the zoning administration to do just that several years ago for his daughter, and the neighborhood did not challenge it um, due to the reasoning and the purposing. Uh, Mr. Tishner placed a double wide mobile home on the property, which now appears to be vacant um, as there's been no lights on for months. Uh, the primary reason that neighbors are opposed to the zoning change is that it lowers our property values to have small lots in our rural county setting. To approve a zoning change that lowers property values of the neighborhood, there should be an overwhelming, compelling reason for a change. Um, as stated in our appeal letter, Mr. Tishner only recently purchased the property a few months ago and now wants to subdivide it to accommodate a buyer. Um, 
if the buyer is unable to afford the entire parcel, it's Mr. Tishner's responsibility to work out the sale of the property in the mobile home to the buyer, subdividing the E1 property, low density family estate property, decreases the surrounding property values and decreases the quality of the living for the neighborhood. This is clearly a personal financial matter and not justification for zoning change that lowers the property values of other properties in the area. <clears throat> Inability to pay for E1 zone property is not justification for destroying the integrity of the rural community. The neighbors enjoy and respect the rural lifestyle, including space and nature. So the request change does, in fact, change the character of our neighborhood. People choose to live in rural areas for many reasons, including farming, gardening, raising, enjoying wildlife, outdoor adventures, or just to have more space. Um, from the Harrison County Code 403.1, or 01, the purpose of E1 estate district districting is to provide for very low density estate type residential development along with limited scale hobby agricultural farm use adjacent um, to areas where character where the character of the development is established as is or planned predominantly residential we the neighbors of big creek road concur with this portion of the harrison county code and believes it protects our rights as citizens of harrison county and maintains the rural countryside environment of the neighborhood community. On the other hand, Mr. Tishner has repeatedly requested zoning changes to increase living density, which is in opposition to the rural countryside environment of our neighborhood. These requests are substantiated in our response letter. <coughs> At the time of the planning board meeting, the members of the community had not been provided the physical description of the property breakout. In the initial request for rezoning the property in question, Mr. Tishner did not provide the dimensions of the breakout other than stating it would be a one acre area. After paying for filing fees and transcript fees, we were finally able to see the plan. Mr. Tishner does not talk to members of the neighborhood community, so we don't know what his motivations are and the actions he's taking. Um, during the planning meeting, <laughs> Mr. Tishner's representative had a number of incorrect facts, thus misleading planning board <coughs> members. And, and I'd like to stress that, misleading the planning board members. The primary mis misstatements included, Mr. Tishner's representative, who was Mr. Carr, misled the board by stating that he was a member of the neighborhood. He is not. Mr. Carr repeatedly gave his address as 14071 Big Creek Road. In fact, he does not live in our neighborhood. Can I address that real quickly? And I hate to interrupt you, but that was his mistake. That was the address on the application. He should have listed his home personal address, not the the person you're asking to uh, to resent. So I just wanted to make that clear. Yes, sir. You made that mistake three times. Yeah. Maybe four. I agree. Okay. Uh, Mr. Carr also stated that the trailer was existing since 1985. That's not true either. Um, it was, in fact, uh, recently replaced by Mr. Tishner. This is relevant because it's presumptuous to spend thousands of dollars to flip a property thinking that the planning board was going to approve his subdivision plan. Mr. Carr also stated that the occupant of the mobile home was going to be Mr. Tishner's daughter, which is interesting because Mr. Tishner's daughter and husband, and I think 10 children, have recently moved in to an adjoining property. Okay. Um, Mr. I'm Carr sorry. stated that the Tishner, um, uh, that Mr. Tishner hadn't owned the property across Big Creek Road and in front of ours for three years, but county, county records still show that he does. Are you uh, telling me that there's already a trader on this property? Yeah. There was, it's a new one, not the one that's... It's not, not a new one. It's, I think it's like I mean, 2006. It's just more recent updated. <laughs> when, when Mr. Tishner bought the piece of property, he removed a junk trailer gotcha. and put on a 2006 trailer. Um, so uh, let's see, so uh, Mr. Carr then iterated that the breakout was to support a buyer that doesn't have the means to purchase the full property, possibly a brother of Mr. Tishner's. Only when these statements were challenged were they retracted and modified 
these, mis these misrepresentations should not be overlooked in these proceedings. Um, in 29, uh, this is uh, just previous requests for improvements to the neighborhood that, um, that, that Mr. Tishner had a problem with. Um, in 2018, I noticed the county civil engineer surveying our easement road. Um, I asked him why, and he said the county was interested in taking over the maintenance. I can't express to you to the excitement I felt at the time. Um, he stated that the county would need an endorsement of all the property owners along the road and increase the easement to 60 feet. Um, I was able to secure the endorsement of five out of the six land owners, except for Darren Tishner. Thinking the stumbling block was the release of footage along the road, another neighbor, Mr. Joel Walton, developed a request to the county to grandfather our 50-foot easement and uh, move forward with the request. Mr. Tishner still refused to sign the request. Consequently, not only have Can I, I interrupt you just a minute, I want to clarify where we are. In yes, sir. To the road. Are you talking about Rose Boulevard uh, east of uh, west or east? East. <clears throat> east. You're talking about the road that was east. The undeveloped road. <coughs> I, I, I shudder to use the term undeveloped because I spent <laughs> the last 23 years and hundreds and hundreds of hours and thousands and thousands of dollars maintaining that road. Yeah. You have? Me, personally. Yeah. Me, personally. Yeah. Now, I have one neighbor that's helping me with putting rock on the road, financially. Which is still expensive. So y'all yeah. are, are residents, you, I'd say y'all. It's me. It's you. I'm the guy. You're, the, you're a resident of the uh, Road Boulevard East. Yeah, of, sometimes of people call it Rosebud Court. <laughs> Okay, I, uh, yeah, but that, that's a private road. That is not, not a county-maintained road. Uh, that's, a, that's exactly the issue. Somebody told him that the county wanted the road. Uh, we did? No, no. Let me clarify that because I'm the supervisor involved in that. I was willing to ask the board to approve that as a county-maintained road if we were given the necessary right-of-ways on the road to maintain proper drainage and ditches and all that and it was a, a part of that <clears throat> obligation was that the residents on that non-maintained road would give us the easements and that's give us not uh, the, the easements to properly prepare the road for drainage and all that and apparently one did not and that killed the, the process because we're not going to buy easements you wouldn't have an eminent domain. Saying, oh, would you have to pay if you have eminent domain? Okay. No, no, You're we'd right. have to pay for that. Correct, so I see. The benefit of the residents giving the county the necessary easements to, to maintain and build the road is that they get a benefit of, of a new road. A better road, yeah. And, and, if, and, if, and this has occurred on several occasions, not just where he's talking about, on several occasions where people have given us easements. Everybody gives us easements, we accept the road, the county accepts the road, and we build the road and maintain it. There are other places similar to what he's describing where residents did not want to do it and the deal, for lack of a better way, to, right, yes. the deal falls through <coughs> and they have to maintain the road. Right. I just want to make sure we were talking about the uh, right road. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, so it's about a quarter mile long. That's right. And I spend probably 80 hours or more a year, maybe maybe 160 hours a year, weeks, and thousands of dollars a year putting gravel down on that road. Um, <clears throat> so anyways... Um, Do your neighbors say you're welcome? <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. A bottle of whiskey. Y'all need to pitch in and help Y'all need to pitch in and help you. A, a, a 1.7 liter <laughs> bottle of whiskey at Christmas. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, so no, they're, 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 they're appreciative. I, I have a question, probably for Patrick, excuse me. So, Patrick, there's already a trailer. The trailer's already been exchanged and replaced. Yes. Okay, so we're just right now voting on the zoning change. The zoning Are change. Are they not going to they need a permit for the trailer? Um, I, I just confirmed with the office that it was grandfathered. Uh, they had a power bill. <coughs> one year 
of the replacement. So they did apply for a permit to exchange it. If they had kept the property E1, we wouldn't be here. But to create a smaller lot. Keep, keep, keep in mind. Yeah, I don't I didn't mean to confuse yeah. y'all. Keep in mind the road <coughs> that he's talking about, the trailer's not located on that road. The road well, I'm talking about the maintenance and all that. It's across Big Creek Road. The road that the trailer is located on or the property that's had issued before us today is on a county maintained road. Okay. But they Correct. don't need a permit for the trailer since they have, it has been occupied. Yeah, that, that was so, the, the, the so clarify this. Because she's having, yeah. I think she's trying she to needs, clarify the same uh, issue yeah, that I yeah. had initially. If the trailer is grandfathered in, which okay, which you say is, then he has, if it's grandfathered in, he can replace that trailer. Correct. Right. And, and, and have it there. The only problem is the property belongs to him or to the petitioners, if I'm right. Okay. What he's trying to do is separate that one acre so that he can sell the one acre or sell the whatever's left, the four acres or whatever he has left. One or the other he wants to sell. The one acre with the manufacturer. The one home. acre is the one he wants to sell. If he didn't want to sell that, he could put that trailer there. Yes, we would not be. That we would not be here. That's what I'm trying to clarify. Thank you. That's the what. Fact, I'm... The fact <laughs> that you, you follow what I'm saying. I do now. Okay. Yeah, I do now too. Okay. So the reason he wants the, the reason he wants to change the, uh, or he's applying before us to have the one acre is that he wants to separate that parcel. From the four acres, I might be off on my acres, but he's got about four and a half acres. He wants to create one acre from the four and a half acres because he's going to sell it. Gotcha. Okay? Okay. Thank you. okay. So, and the reason I'm bringing up the room is our main concern in the community with regards to this action we're taking today is the decrease um, in our potential property values to our neighborhoods. And to our neighborhood, and that's why I bring up the road too, because obviously, saying no, we're not going to have the county take over maintenance of my road, um, basically would benefit anyone in the neighborhood who's okay. considering buying I property. And she's, she's been, she's been stopping. I've been stopping. I'm almost done. Pause it. The time, any time anyone's talking other than so we didn't still take it. So he has ten minutes. Yeah, he didn't use his ten He's, minutes. He spoke yourself for 10 minutes, not counting right. y'all's questions right. or anybody else. Okay. I've rehearsed this 100 times. You did very well. I can do it, I can do it in 10 minutes. So. <laughs> Had I not been stopped, I appreciate yeah, if yeah. I could just complete my conclusion. Yeah, go ahead and close out. Go ahead and close out. Okay. In conclusion, I would like to reinforce that the signatories opposing the zoning change do not oppose the placement of the manufactured home. Okay, stated again. Okay, this is taking like 20 seconds to turn this page. <laughs> we collectively oppose the zoning change, okay? From E1, very low density, to R2, residential. So in summary, we the coalition are strongly opposed to the request zoning change and feel that the approval of this request will be detrimental to the environment and character of our neighborhood, community, and also our property values. Thank you so much. Do you have anyone else in here? With you that wants to speak. Okay, come on up and state your name and the address for the report. <coughs> Before that, Mr. President, may I ask one question? Okay. Can they put that mobile home in there without a zone change? Yes. It's already there. Yes. It's already there. Yes. So they've abided by all the rules. So, yes. so why are we here? <laughs> to, change to, change to, change to, change to create a small lot. Oh, change the lot. Change the lot. Change the lot. If I may, in the attorney, I don't want to act as an attorney, but y'all correct me if I'm wrong, Pat, in the attorney. Technically, petitioners did not do anything in violation of the ordinance because they had a right, based on the grandfather, to put that trailer there. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So they haven't violated the ordinance in that sense. Okay. Okay, he had. A, they have a right to put the trailer there based on the fact that they grandfathered in. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. But he just wants to subdivide it. That's why I was trying to get a clarification on that. Story. I'm sorry. Okay. okay, you got it. A uh, Lila Paul and um, my husband Brad's with me at 14101 Big Creek Road. Okay. And this Rose Boulevard goes down beside our properties. We have entrances to two more pieces of our property. <clears throat> and um, in June of this year, this is to, uh, I'm discussing this about the properties. We held discussions with Mr. Donald Cuevas to purchase this 4.6 acres that are the subject of this hearing. We had a handshake and a verbal agreement as we had known each other neighbors for 47 years. We produced an attorney who drew up all the paperwork. The very ne next day, Mr. Tishner called my husband, Brad, and offered to buy the property from him. Brad said no, that we wanted the property for our sons. We have three grown sons that we raised on our property out there. Ten days later, on the day before we were supposed to close, Mr. Cuevas called and told us, that he had sold the property to Darren Tishner. We never even had a chance to counter offer. Our intentions for the property were to expand our almost 15 acres we already have, not to subdivide it. We have lived on Big Creek Road directly across from the subject property for over 47 years and enjoy our rural style of living. We have labored to make our property a sanctuary it's park-like, it's beautiful, it fits in the definition of the E1 zone property to a T with multiple gardens and water features. We have spent tens of thousands of hours and dollars developing our property. We have made a sufficient, a significant brick and mortar commitment to our property. We are concerned that our future request to subdivide property in our neighborhood we're worried that in the you know, future that he'll want to subdivide the other part that he's got left over. We are opposed to the zoning change to R2. We are committed to the development of property as an E1. We wish to maintain the rural nature of the neighborhood and provide for future subdivision of the property to less than three acres per lot size is not in accordance with the county code. And like I say, we've lived out there a long time. We've raised our three sons. And um, we love it out there. We love the privacy. And we've worked many a hard hour on our property to make it very beautiful. And yes, there's other little pieces in there. But it was subdivided out by the Quavises. <coughs> one was for a recent divorce. And the other one was to, he got the property in a, uh, when his mom and dad died. So he had to give his brother a little piece on the corner. So are those one acre lots or do you? No, they're not. They're like one of them, I think, is point one eighty one and the the new one that was a part of this piece that Darren Tishner's getting is point seven five of an acre. When was those subs of it? The last one was just done. In fact, it's not even supposed to be final on the piece of property for Darren Tishner till about March. Patrick, and those that you can subdivide that without uh, zoning. <laughs> if the zoning is correct. So I believe there's two R1 lots to the west, to the east of uh, where the subject property is. So how big is the R1 lot? One acre in this area. It needs All a well right, right now, well the zoning, zoning is three, three acres. acres. When you said, Ms. Paul, when you said that your property backs up to the uh, property in question today. The, it's across from it on the little Rose Boulevard. Okay, you're across from, from on Rose Boulevard, uh, if, I, if I'm getting my direction straight. Right. The property that's in, in discussion today is on the <laughs> south side. Right, of, uh, we're on the north. north. And y'all are on the north side. Right. Okay, and our, our, but your address is Red Creek Road? That's the way they did it, yes. Yeah, Even so the ones that's down... That's throwing me. I thought you might have lived on Red Creek. No, Did it's you, Big, you Creek. Big Creek. Big Creek. Excuse me, Big Creek. I yes. got a Red Creek Road, too. Yes, sir. So I Big got Creek. one, too. You got a, Your address is 
address Big Creek Road, but you actually live on Rose Boulevard. Well, we have property on Rose Boulevard, and those addresses when my son oh, lived oh, right okay. there. Oh, okay. So you own the property across from the Right. Right. Okay. And we're doing the entryway to our shop. Right. Right okay. across from that property. Okay. And then in the back, we have a beautiful gate coming in with brick posts and all that. You can access it. You can right. access it from exactly. your home down on the that back, road. Uh, right. uh, Big Creek Road. Yes, sir. Okay. So I just wanted to state that statement for y'all. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay, good. If you want to come on up and uh, <laughs> state your name and, and that. <clears throat> uh, my name is Jeannie Tishner. This is my husband, Darren. Thank <clears throat> you. We're the ones that made the application and it was approved and it has since been appealed. Um, am I able to show you some pictures? Yeah, sure. you had, if you had okay. done that so, yeah. um, you know, in the complaint they said that, you know, our properties aren't in keeping with the neighborhood. You showed these that I have asked to have these pictures. Uh, uh, maybe we shouldn't take them as a record, but I think you're free to look at yeah, them. I, I, okay, well, this is three houses that is actually on Rose Boulevard, um, right by our properties. <laughs> and this. Is the condition of our properties we've not done anything to make the neighborhood worse if anything we've made it better so i'm nervous <laughs> That's okay. all right all right um so good morning and we do appreciate what y'all do in the community and um we are glad that we have someone here to come to in these circumstances. Um, over the years, Steve Harrison has tried to assassinate our character to anybody who would listen. Um, I offer a stack of personal reference letters uh, as a defense to his ugliness. I offer also that the petition we have has more than 15 signatures. They are all neighbors within a block of this. Those are pet were those submissions. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't that to the plan. Or right. well, you didn't need it. Pardon? So you didn't need What we're saying, we can't consider that if it were not presented at the commission. Right. They weren't at the meeting, they had someone speak on their behalf at the meeting. Yeah, that was okay. the one that used the wrong address. Well, everybody's not against the uh, 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 Yeah. Well, you can say that. Yeah. You, okay. have, you have the right to say that. Okay. Yeah. We just can't accept that as part of the record. Gotcha. Well, Steve Harrison has a vendetta against us and has for years. We've lived out on Big Creek Road for 16 years. We, too, raised our children on Big Creek Road. Um, and a large portion of that time, we've been harassed at every turn to surrender some of our land for the road, for his side road, his private road. Um, <clears throat> this is just another way of him protesting us, not giving up however wide, 800 feet long, so that he could have his road, uh, which if the county maintained his road, that'd be fantastic. But we don't want to give up any of the land. Uh, some of the land now is ours, some of it isn't. But in either case, not only would it steal all of our privacy because it involves our tree line, so it would be like living in a vacant lot, um, but it would also cause a real uh, erosion problem because our property sits up above the road. You go taking away all the trees and the root system and all of that, we're going to have a problem. Um, and I don't have to point out, no one gave it to us. Let, let me point out. Oh, and if I may, Mr. President, yeah. sure. uh, uh, the issue with the easements and the road really doesn't apply to this, this decision of the board in making a decision in reference to where you're putting the trail. Okay? Yes, sir. Uh, 
that has, we, that's not a consideration. You have a right to do with your property what you want to do. Uh, yes, sir. That's not a consideration. <clears throat> okay. She's I think what she's trying to do is just point herself. out the, the reasons why the neighbors are opposing it. Is that yes. what, that's what you Yes. Think? Which is part of the backup. So that apparently was brought up at the... Yeah, that was brought up. Uh, uh, my point is, it, it, I'm just trying to clarify to her that that's not something we can consider in reference to whether we approve the zoning or not, or the change. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so I just want to say that um, I know that in the complaint he spoke of my 10 grandchildren, and he did get that number wrong, but it begs to differ what do my grandchildren have anything to do with this situation here? Um, he's referred to our property as a compound. I offered you photos. Um, I don't know what he's talking about. Currently, we own uh, the home that we're in, one more piece, and then the piece that we're talking about now. Um, who, are, who are you? I know that's the piece you want to subdivide. So then you sell it. It's Please. long and skinny. Very long and skinny. It goes from Big Creek Road and then it goes down and becomes part of Rose Boulevard. So what we're wanting to do is we've already the trailer is already there. We've already jumped through all the hoops. It's got a brand new septic system, the whole nine yards. All we want to do is section out that and sell it. What's left, the long skinny thing, we're not going to do anything with. To me, it is a buffer because my grandchildren own the next seven acres. Would you know the person buying the trailer or are you just selling it? Yes, family. It is a family member. Yes, it's a family member. Uh, but it's not my daughter. She's the one that owns the seven acres. Um, he's accused us of all kinds of things from sneaking to his uh, lake to fish. We don't even own a fishing pole. Um, from shooting automatic weapons for three hours straight, he's obviously got more money than me if he thinks that I can shoot that way. Have we ever shot there? Yes. Did we have a professional come in and design the gun range? Yes. Did Steve Harrison call the cops? Yes. Did they come out? Yes. And they said that they commended us for what a good job we did with it. Let me ask you, are there other properties surrounding that area that are only one acre? Yes. So the subject property, <clears throat> the subject property that we're talking about, literally one of the properties that kiss it on Rose Boulevard is an acre. And the one that kisses it is less than an acre. And then we own one acre across Big Creek, but right there. You can walk to it. Um, there are nine properties within a block, and there are uh, that are one acre or so. There are 27 properties within a mile that are less than three, which is what the original ordinance is. So we're not asking to do anything <clears throat> that doesn't have precedent. It's out there in this neighborhood. Uh, this is nothing new for this neighborhood. Um, he went around telling people that we were trying to put in a trailer park, and I heard somebody holler it out today. That would be me. I asked that question. Um, I heard somebody holler it out today. They're trying to put four more. We have no desire for a trailer. My grandchildren live there, too. My children live there, too. Um, so that's just not... Uh, correct. <laughs> we have had him call the utility company, and we only find out about it because he's out by the road and he's waving his hand by our trees. My husband goes out there to find out. He's trying to talk them into cutting our trees down. He's worried that they're too close to the utilities. Um, finally, the utility company said our trees were fine, and they didn't take anything down. Then he set fire to the underbrush along his road and it got so out of hand that the fire department had to be called and our trees were scorched. Uh, that was just another example Excuse that we me. have been. Do you know the date of that? I'd like to substantiate because I'm seeing a lot of shaking heads so I'd like to start substantiating if please you give me a date. Please. 
I don't have I don't have that date with me okay. right here, but yes, I can get that date. I'll text the fire chief and find out. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry, man. <clears throat> I think it was 2016. Okay. But I would have to look at it. Um, he called our we, he called he would call our house. It would change the mood of the entire house. And so it finally got to the point, he said we don't speak to him, it finally got to the point where we avoided him. We wouldn't accept phone call, oh, it's Steve, don't answer the phone. Um, and so we just quit even paying attention to him at all. He accused us of being nasty neighbors, that was one of the things he put in there, and he offered a photograph as proof of someone else's garbage, not our own. Um, and that was proof of how messy we are. Um, <clears throat> he claimed that uh, everyone was aware of the raw sewage situation that was on the ground under the grandfathered trailer before we bought it. And he says everybody knew it, including us. Well, we didn't know it, but I'm surprised that wasn't a cause of concern for him or the coalition. Um, he went around and had people sign a petition, and I have here a letter from one of the petitioners requesting to get her name taken off of it. She said she was like railroaded at her car, and she had just gotten back from the hospital, whatever, whatever, and she wrote a letter and signed it and said she wants her name off that petition. Um, having said all this in an attempt to defend our name against all the allegations, I'd also like to say I fail to see what any of this has to do with whether or not I get to section off one acre with a home on it. The county voted unanimously to allow the acre to be sectioned out. There are no new arguments brought here today. I see no reason why the ruling should not stand, and I ask that the board finds the same. Uh, And that's just the, the end of it right there. This is only about a piece of land being sectioned out. Of all the grievances that have happened through the years, I fail to see where any of it has anything to do with what we're here for today. Mr. Steve, I believe, what is energized in his push is because we would not give him permission to take that piece of property. And at the time, this acre that they're talking about, we sectioned off prior to when my daughter moved in, her husband got out of the military. <clears throat> we petitioned the county and had to purchase that acre from our mortgage company and all the survey and all the hoops jumping through that. Well, that one acre runs beside that road that he wants us to give up the property. So when we get, if we gave up that property, we'd be giving up our part of our acre and have to go through all that again. But Mr. Steve never offered to purchase a property. When I spoke of my concerns about the erosion, he said, I, he told me the kind of trees I could plant. When I told him about the privacy, he told me I could put up a fence. I mean, I, and he and he is a bulldozer. He, he's, he bullies me. So I just got where I just ignored him. And the property that, that the, the, um, Mr. Paul or Miss Paul was speaking of that we we were in the purchase in the we were motivated to buy that property because it goes along my daughter's property. And the gentleman that lived there moved. He got a divorce and he moved on. And his ex-wife still lives in one of those acres that adjoins our property. And when when he came to me one day and he and I and I thought I was going to buy it. And the gentleman said. <clears throat> Well, Mr. Brad had asked for the property years ago, and he wanted first per, first opportunity. So, Darren, I'm sorry, he's going to buy it for seventy-five thousand dollars. So I called Mr. Brad because Mr. Brad and I were at least friendly over the years. I've never had a problem with him. I fixed plumbing problems at his house. He's come over and shot at my house, that kind of stuff. And I said, Mr. Brad, did you know I want that property for my grandkids? And he said, well, just call me later. We're going to go ahead and buy it. I said, okay. 
He said he might sell it afterwards. Yeah. So maybe a week went by and the gentleman that sold him, that was going to sell him the land, came and said that Mr. Brad said that he could sell it for, if he could sell it for more, sell it. He so said he Mr. Brad the, was supposed to have the money for it on Monday and never did. And it went on for days and days and days. And finally, he told us, Mr. Brad said, if you can sell it for more than what I'm going to pay you for, sell it. And so we bought it. So, so he came and made... You don't have to get a chance. Well, well, he came and made an offer to us to buy it. And we bought it. And ever since then, the, Mr. Brad had not talked to us. I didn't realize that the dealings were between him and him and not me and him. So there's hard feelings there that I did not mean intend... And I didn't, Am I able to submit this letter of the uh, petitioner no, wanting off? Say it again. If it were not submitted during the commission. Well, this um, happened after that because, okay. All right, well, thank you for your time. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. Okay, you have one person. That you're going to... If you're going to be one person to speak on behalf yeah, of you're going to be the rebuttal. You're going to be yes. the rebuttal. Uh, wait, what? Yeah. Right. Are you going to be a rebuttal? No. I'm Let, gonna... Let's stay rebuttal. Okay. okay. Is this time for the rebuttal? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ten minutes. What she said. They can share the time. Yeah, you can share. You can share the time. Five, 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 five minutes rebuttal. Five. Well, oh, I'm going to spare you guys the response of my character assassination. Um, I'm a pretty good guy. There's a lot of mistruths being said here today. Let's start just with one. Find out from the fire department whether or not they came out to put out a fire. Just find that out. Because, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm certified by the Mississippi State Forestry Commission to do controlled burning. I actually went to their training. So, um, so yeah, I burn property all the time. Okay? Um, I never actually said that, um, that, that the properties that, that, that you've been buying and purchasing and upgrading and stuff, I actually admire that. He's taking properties that don't look so good and made them better for his personal use. No intent to help out the neighborhood in any way or form. Um, so I just wanted to say that out loud. Yeah, he took a, a 1980 trailer and replaced it with a 2006. It looks better. Where do you live? Um, I live to the east of this property across Big Creek Road on uh, what's called sometimes Rosebud Court. How far away? Um, my easement is a quarter of a mile. Your house is half far away. Well, maybe, yeah, a quarter of a mile. It's not. I'm just curious. Yeah. 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 How, how long have you lived there, sir? Not uh, since 1998. Yeah. And now I'm kind of, I'm kind of befuddled here. Um, <coughs> shucks, I've lost my time. Can't find my rebuttal. I'll ask you a question if you don't mind when you look. Okay. Who else uses that road that you make? There are two other families down that road. Okay. Um, they live the same distance down. They have um, five acres each. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, one has ten. The, 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 the property's on five acres. Okay. And um, I maintain that road. Um, and I do that as a neighborly gesture thing. Okay. I have the equipment. Yes, I bought a track hoe. Um, Let's talk about the trees just a little bit because I want, I wish there was going on record. Because one of these days, those trees are going to fall on a piece of Mr. Tishner's property as well. Well, that's his problem. And I guess maybe and it is. And starting a wildfire, with all due respect, sir, just even if you have training, right. I should think it's not okay. Yeah. I, I, it wasn't, what I'm saying is it wasn't out of control. May, may I make it the fire department did have to respond. No. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. They say they did? That's just well, because somebody it's else called. Well, they wildfire the intersection of Bay Creek and Rosebud Lane. The, they got. That's, that's to help you find it with the fire department. Okay. okay. Right. All right. If I may. <clears throat> Again, I would emphasize to both parties that what you're talking about does not address the zoning on the issue. Okay. Whether he has trees over the Bowie Road and across the road over there. That really does not address 
the question of whether this board should approve a, 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 a zone change and ultimately a conditional use permit. Okay. Okay. okay, I'm going to just... So, you know, those, those are issues that you're addressing that doesn't it's not going to play okay. in, in, in my part, I'm sure the other board members' part, in making a decision as to the approval of the application as it stands, the, the zoning change and the conditional use permit. Okay, I will focus my efforts here. Yeah. On the, on my the, my the concern is, is, keep, is keep in mind, you, you, you're winding down. Well, I hope the time hasn't been taken. My concern is you that... You only have five minutes from the beginning, so we, we, we're going to give you an ample amount of time, but you're all winding down. Okay. My concern is the changing of the zoning. We're not opposed to placing the trailer there. Okay. My concern and the questioning about each other, I guess, is what has been, what's going to be helpful for the neighborhood? And um, where I've tried to be helpful for the neighborhood, helping people around the neighborhood and stuff and all, help maintaining that road. Mr. Tishner really hasn't done anything for the neighborhood other than help himself. But that okay. really has nothing to and, do with this zoning. Pardon? That really has nothing to do with okay. this Okay, okay. Well, the deal is, is he continues to try to drive down the property values in the neighborhood because he plans on buying a neighborhood. <clears throat> and, that's, and that is relevant. He plans on buying the neighborhood. And more power to him. Just don't change the complexion of it. Keep it E1. I also wanted you guys to know real quickly that um, prior to the bo um, Christmas, I reached out in the text to Mr. Tishner to try to open discussions to try to find a solution. He did not return that text. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And I need to clarify, and I think Mr. Harris did indicate this, that there's been approval by the Zoning Commission of other requests similar to that in that particular neighborhood. So did we rezone the one acre right next to your shooting range? Yes, sir. But no home was ever placed on that. Because he no, mentioned that's a, two -way, that's a double wide okay. home on there. Yes. And then two properties that touch. I, I just want to factor to answer. I'm sorry. I, That's okay. I, I, didn't, I don't, you know, I'm, sorry. I'm asking him a question, and yes, I know sir. he's probably he's asking you. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to make sure, because I think in Mr. Harrison, Harrison right? I'm sorry, I don't want to mispronounce your name. Test, testified that they didn't have objections to other uh, zone changes, similar to what I think they're requesting. Now, that if that's the case, that poses a problem for the opposition. Okay, that poses a problem because there, there, there has <coughs> in effect been a change in the neighborhood. If there have been previous zoning approvals in that neighborhood to allow for whatever the reasons, whether it's for his family or whatever that poses a problem because what we have to, the the is the reason why it was granted reason the commission granted y'all uh, granted them permission to do this was that the neighborhood had changed i think that's what it states in the in the transcript and in the record that's that's what it says yeah am i correct yeah. mm -hmm. i want to make sure i'm not because i read it and if that's what i recall that there's that commission decision the commissioners that made the, uh, <coughs> the recommendation based it on the fact that there were changes in the neighborhood and it, it those changes has occurred and that makes it difficult then for me as a board member to deny or overturn the commission's request i just want that uh, clarified looking at it strictly from the ordinances uh required if there's been a change in the neighborhood, if there's been other zone, if there's been zoning, similar zoning permission granted, then that in effect changes the neighborhood. And then that makes it difficult 
to overturn the commission's decision to grant their request. Well, where does it stop? And, and, and you're you, you going to subdivide all of that's, it? That's, that's the problem. It, 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 that that is the problem. I'm sorry, but but when you say when you say when you state, and I, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just simply <clears> stating my position in reference to the ordinance. Uh, that's the problem. The, the previous case, the previous hearing, if you were, they did not have changes in that neighborhood. There's never been an approval to, to reduce, uh, accept the one acre plot and put a trailer in. In your case, in this particular issue, it has been. Correct. And that's what makes it difficult for, for me as a board member and I'm sorry, if I have to correct one thing, they, that, they did apply for another objection now, and, and we objected. You've had your time, we can't, we can't, true. but we can't keep going back and forth. In saying that, Mr. President, I will, is I, will have, I will make a motion based on what I'm telling, that for the record, what I'm saying, to uh, uphold the commission's decision. I second it. Okay. Don't miss the whole point. Okay, it's, it's been. Uh, the, so point is, I, I don't know, right? the point is, we've got to see what the ordinance requires. Okay. okay. It's been moved and second. I put it in for the discussion. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. So, Thank you. So, us being nice the first time, we'll end this this time. And try another one. No further one. So, is there, is there, uh, we would have went around there. So, we, uh, without any, without anything further, we would recess to the 24th. You adjourn, you adjourn here. Oh. Yeah. 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 No, it's one of the I don't think it's time. Uh, uh, I go right on. Now, we can switch the time from 9 to 9. Uh, you can so that the meeting? Time. Yeah. So we meet at 10. But if we switch down from 9 30 to 9, that'll give us a chance to do the. Uh, we can change it, right? The time? We can do it. Yeah, let's do that. You don't want to do that? Sure. Change it from 20 to 9. To 9 to 9. Yeah, we're we're to nine. Well, we, can, we can go through the claims and have that. And what time is the meeting? Yeah. That gives us an hour. We should yeah. be. We should be. Right. Okay. So change the time for the next, the 24th. The 24th will be at 9 o'clock. Thank you. It's the Gulfport Courthouse. Thank you. For 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Um, get that notice out. Okay. And then, um, you can tell. so. Yeah. Do we need a motion to change the time or um No, it's up to I think the board yeah. can okay. so you're gonna adjourn and then yeah, we're going to adjourn and yeah, we're going to adjourn. Yeah. Okay. So, so we have time to post um, we've already been posted. And I'm sorry, the twenty fourth is just because we need to do another meeting. Or yeah. there's important yeah. stuff. Um, two things we're going we're to paying, we were making our plans because we had so much time oh, gotcha. in between the next meeting. We well, had, uh, road, we had three appointments that day. The uh, biggest thing. Y'all need me, right? Big, no, the biggest thing is the road plan. It's the road plan. It has to be adopted. Yeah. Yeah. Second, and the second thing we're going to do is not ready yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. I'll change my mind. I'll change my mind. And then the 10 o'clock is to go to the mental health. Pardon. Just yeah. some suggestion on the road plan. Keep the y'all need to keep in mind that you can always amend the road plan unless you put in there some kind of better off you are, and then you amend it. As you need to put that for you just have a bunch of things in there that you can pay a bunch of roads. Yeah. Yeah. Motion to adjourn for me a second. I'll the motion to say aye. So what did we say?